Be sure to thank HyperX, Thermaltake, and Sapphire in the comments. Without them, we wouldn't be here. And also be sure to click on the links in the description. We saw a lot of the stuff at Computex, but I wanted to reiterate that Thermaltake is very serious about custom water cooling, and they've got a smorgasbord. That's right, a smorgasbord of stuff right here. Um, every size radiator you can imagine, we've got a million reservoirs, um, just water blocks, and a lot of these are, you know, Thermaltake exclusives or Thermaltake designs. Some of them are partners with other companies, but, uh, you know, they've got every size and every thickness. Look at that, look at that girth on this guy. Uh, all the way up to this, this one here that we saw at, uh, again, Computex. Three 180-millimeter um, fans will fit onto this ridiculous uh, unit, and they actually have some cases now. But speaking of their cases, uh, I want to go in there and really focus on that. So, uh, Shannon, you've been working on some new cases with the team. Uh, so what's going on with the, uh, the Core X9 and the Core X1 and the Core X2? The Core series is based all around the fact that we want to build it for you, we want you to be able to take the modularity of it, rip it apart, and build it the way you want it. The Core V71 you saw with the removing the drive cages, having special mounting locations for drives was kind of a start. The Core X series was really our pet project beyond that, that we spent over like eight to 10 months developing and making it and taking it apart and building in it just to make sure that not just, oh, from an engineering level, we can sell you a case, but that us people who build systems, like I build systems like you guys do. So I look at it and go, okay, what's gonna be a problem? And then we ripped it apart and made it that way. So you can see in the Core X9, everything in there, you have your motherboard tray and everything can all be pulled out. It all has thumb screws, so you can literally lift it out, build the system outside the case, drop it in, or you can even leave those components out if you're not even using them. Like for instance, in this dual build, you took it all out because we wanted liquid cooling. So you had all the huge radiators mounted top, 480s all around the thing. Where, where are the hard drive cages normally? You've got most of them removed here. Normally they're around the floor, right below down by the PSU, so it's still out of sight. It's not, in, we wanna make sure, you know, you guys build beautiful systems. We wanna make sure you can show them off and you don't have a big hard drive sitting up in front of it. So what we do is we give you basically as many options as possible, including, like we were talking about before, you have behind the CPU tray cutout, you actually have a separate tray down there that's hidden away that can do dual SSDs for like a RAID setup along with a 3.5 inch drive. So you can have a full gaming setup with a hidden away tray with none of the cages installed. Uh, but this one is stacked. Now, okay, how many can you stack and what can you do when you stack them? Well, I'll tell you right now, to stack them, as high as your roof is, your, your imagination's the limit. As I wanna see somebody out there stack like, I don't know, 10 of these, send me a picture. I'll send you a pizza or something, I don't know, but I, I wanna see that, I need to see a picture of that. I'll send them a pizza if they stack them like five high. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah, exactly, you got two pizzas to stack these things. It's worth the price. When it comes down to it, you st you, uh, you mount them together, and they are rock solid. I mean, you can look the thing literally. Oh, the yeah. box, it's, the, the thing it's sitting on, is less stable than the actual chassis itself, and so they're stuck together. And once you take all the trays out and everything, you literally can pass anything through. It's just a big open hole, so it becomes one gigantic tower. Nice. Now, um, I've noticed on the bottom here, we've got some wheels. Are those just standard wheels? Do they come with wheels? What's, what's the deal going on there? Well, when we designed that, once again, we wanted to make it simple. So we went down, found standard caster sizes, and we made the holes to match that. So if you decide, hey, you know what, I'm gonna build this thing a monster, but I don't wanna have to carry it and move it around, you can go buy standard casters from any hardware store and put it on there because obviously with the weight of the system, you wanna have the right type of caster. So we didn't wanna include some that maybe people would be upset because, oh, well, you know, I built my 900 pound system and yeah. it broke them. So instead, we wanted people to be able to choose the ones they want. So it's a very standard caster size right at the bottom so you just take the feet off and make it happen. So you can go out there and get like rubber wheels if you wanted to, as long as they have the you know, standard size casters, whatever. Yeah, uh, you can pretty much, once again, this comes down to build it the way you want it. That's what we built it for. We designed this so that literally you just take your imagination, whatever you can imagine building, I think for the most part, you can do it with this case. I noticed a lot of slotted holes. I want to say thanks for that. That's really handy when you're mounting, you know, radiators and fans. Also on the top here, I noticed the entire bracket comes off. So what went into all that? I mean, we mentioned a little bit of that, but like, yeah, what went into that when you guys were designing it? Well, what happens is, is when you're building a case, normally you're taking a radiator, you're trying to, I mean, how many times have you taken trying to hold a fan exactly with the fan holes, hold the radiator, slide it up, and then try to get the screws in place? That's usually about the time when I'm like, help, I just start yelling help, I don't even know if anybody's home. And then maybe somebody will run and be like, what? I'm like, can you hold this so I can screw the other side of this together? It's really frustrating. And then, you know, that's or, how it works. Or you give up, you leave the side panel off with the radiator sitting off to the side. Right. But <laughs> with these, we pull, we pull the trays out. You can actually mount the radiators, mount everything together, drop it directly in the top, screw it down. And it's like, it takes a few minutes versus a few hours of frustration, probably a lot of drinks and a lot of, a lot of anger and eventual rage issues. And you're drunk and homeless in two years and uh, it's all because of that one case you bought. Just think about that. See, we're actually saving your home by giving you this by giving you this panel.
worth the worth the price. Well, it was the price, by the way. <laughs> the price for the X9 is 169. Yeah. And then the micro ATX version, the X2 is mm -hmm. 129, and the mini ATX version is 99. The Core X9 just went on sale at Newegg the time that we actually launched it. At the exact time it launched, it also went up for order. Very nice. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, check them out. We have some prototype static pressure fans here. You can see the different LEDs on this. They actually own this design. Uh, I believe it's patented, patent pending. There you go, stop those. Uh, it's, it's interesting because the Blaze, they, they've got an interesting design here. It's like, hey, stop that, stop that. Um, you can't really hear anything with these. I'm not sure what's going on, but they put it on the radiator, you know, because that's where most of the noise is generated. But I'm going to turn my, my mic around. Now this, is, this is idle, mind you, but but still, you can... Compared to the sound of my voice, you can barely hear anything. So I'm really looking forward to these. They don't even have a name yet. And there's the little, you know, five and a quarter inch um, bay that has all the craziness. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Thermaltik also is coming out with a line of um, rigid tubing. You just use a heat gun to heat it, and then you can bend it and make some really uh, elegant stuff. The thing I like about this is you can usually only get this from the, the smaller boutiques, so it, you know, it, it's going to come at a premium. I imagine Thermaltake is going to be able to produce this uh, in a way that's going to be slightly less expensive. Uh, that's usually not the goal with this kind of stuff. It's usually the look. But um, as you can see, it, it's probably going to look pretty cool. One last thing I want to uh, you know, show you guys is check this out. they got the Water 3.0 block here. And then they got a huge, I believe this is a 200, maybe a 180, I, I'm not exactly sure, but they got this, uh, you know, huge fan and huge radiator. They're like, what happens if we just go ahead and put these together? And it turns out, uh, you know, it can cool the fastest Intel without any problem, even at 4.8 gigahertz. So this is not, this is again, they, they like to play with this stuff and they want audience feedback. So, you know, check out this stuff and let us know what you think in the comments. Again, this is not even a product, just something they put together, but that's kind of what they do. They just tinker and then if it sticks and you guys love it, they make a product. Very cool thermal take. We all know HyperX makes gaming hardware, but they also have a YouTube channel centered on gaming culture that is about to hit 100,000 subscribers. Go ahead and click here to check it out. You may not know it, but Sapphire is sort of the AMD brand. They even make the OEM cards for AMD themselves. Click on the screen to see what's new and uh, maybe some secrets. Thermaltake always has a lot going on, but this year they really have a lot going on and they have upped their game. Click on the screen to check it out.